Dr. Sage here to begin our series of video lectures about host defenses. Of note, this is a brief overview of the host defenses. For fuller details, take an anatomy and physiology course. In today's video, in particular, we're going to discuss defense mechanisms of the host and overview. By the end of this video, you should be able to summarize the three lines of host defense, define marker and discuss its importance in the second and third lines of defense, name the body systems that participate in immunity, describe the structure and function of the lymphatic system and its connection with the circulatory system, name three kinds of blood cells that function in non-specific or innate immunity, connect the mononucleophagocyte system to innate immunity, describe how and where T and B lymphocytes mature to be ready for their role in specific or adaptive immunity, and summarize the importance of cytokines and list one pro-inflammatory and one anti-inflammatory cytokine. Regarding host defenses, the first line of defense is barriers that block invasion at the portal of entry. It does not involve recognition of foreign substances and is general in its action. The second line of defense is also nonspecific. Its internalized system of protective cells involves inflammation and phagocytosis. The third line of defense is acquired on an individual basis as each foreign substance is encountered by lymphocytes. Reaction with each microbe produces unique protective substances and cells that can come into play if the microbe is encountered again, and this provides long-term immunity. A healthy, functioning immune system is responsible for surveillance of the body, recognition of foreign material, and destruction of entities deemed to be foreign. White blood cells move throughout the body, searching for potential pathogens. They're trained to recognize self or body cells and non-self which can be bacteria cells or other invading pathogens. Markers are molecules on the surfaces of cells. They're composed of proteins and or sugars, and they're evaluated by the cells of the immune system. Tissues, organs, and cells participating in immunity include mononuclear phagocytic system, spaces surrounding tissue cells that contain extracellular fluid, bloodstream, and lymphatic system. The major functions of the lymphatic system is they provide an auxiliary route for return of extracellular fluid to the circulatory system, act as drain-off system for the inflammatory response, and render surveillance, recognition, and protection against foreign materials through a system of lymphocytes, phagocytes, and antibodies. Lymphatic fluid, or lymph, is a plasma-like liquid carried by the lymphatic circulation. It's made up of water, dissolved salts, and 2-5% to protein. It transports numerous white blood cells, fats, cellular debris, and infectious agents that have gained access to tissue spaces. Lymphatic vesicles permeate all parts of the body. The thin walls are easily permeated by the extracellular fluid that has escaped from the circulatory system. The two differences between the bloodstream and the lymphatic system are lymph moves in one direction only, from the extremities to the heart, and lymph is only transported through the contraction of skeletal muscles. Organs and tissues that perform lymphoid functions include the thymus, lymph nodes, spleen, salt or skin associated lymphoid tissue, malt or mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, galt or gut associated lymphoid tissue, a loose connective tissue framework that houses aggregates of lymph nodes. The thymus is the site of T cell maturation. This is a triangular structure in the pharyngeal region. It's largest proportionally at birth exhibits high rates of growth and activity, and growth until puberty, and it shrinks gradually throughout adulthood. The lymph nodes are small, encapsulated, bean-shaped organs stationed in clusters along lymphatic channels and large blood vessels. Major aggregations can be found in loose connective tissues in the armpit, the groin, and the neck. It's ideal for filtering out materials that have entered the lymph and to provide appropriate cells for immune reactions. The spleen is a lymphoid organ in the upper left portion of the abdominal cavity. It serves as a filter for blood instead of lymph. Its primary function is to remove worn out red blood cells from circulation. Its immunologic function is it filters pathogens from the blood for phagocytosis by macrophages. Associated lymphoid tissues are bundles of lymphoids beneath the skin and mucosal surfaces all over the body. They include tonsils, the breasts of pregnant and lactating women, galt, malt, salt, and balt, and payers patches. The composition of whole blood includes blood cells suspended in plasma. Plasma is a clear yellowish fluid, whereas serum is the same as plasma, except it is the clear fluid from clotted blood. Serum is used in immune testing and therapy. 
Hematopoiesis is a production of blood cells. Stem cells are the precursor to blood cells. Stem cells are a pool of undifferentiated cells. They're maintained in the bone marrow. Immature or unspecialized cells develop the specialized form and function of mature cells. White blood cells or leukocytes are evaluated by reactions to hematologic stains that contain mixtures of dyes, so the cells can be differentiated by color and morphology. They appear with or without colored granules in the cytoplasm. Granulocytes have dark staining granules, lobe nucleus. Agranulocytes do not have granules and a large nucleus. Granulocytes include neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils, prominent cytoplasmic granules that stain with eosin or methylene blue. Granules can be released to kill foreign cells or affect host tissues. Agranulocytes have globular non-lobe nuclei. They lack prominent cytoplasmic granules, and two general types are lymphocytes and monocytes. Cytokines are products of monocytes, macrophages, lymphocytes, fibroblasts, mast cells, platelets, and the endothelial cells of blood vessels. Four broad categories include pro-inflammatory, which encourage specific and nonspecific immune response, anti-inflammatory, which discourage specific and nonspecific immune response, vasodilators and vasoconstrictors, which change the diameter of blood vessels or vessel permeability, and growth factor cytokines, which regulate lymphocyte growth or activation. The mononucleophagocyte system is a support network of connective tissue fibers. It's a reticular system and it interconnects nearby cells. It meshes with a massive connective tissue network surrounding all organs. Monocytes take up residence near portals of entry or filtration organs, waiting to attack foreign intruders. These tissues and specialized histiocyte cells include the liver, comfort cells, lungs, alveolar macrophages, skin, Langerhans cells, brain, microglia, and others. This has been your brief overview of the defense mechanisms of the host. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.